I'm Ryan. And I'm George. And this is The Sound Project. All right, so today we're going to talk about something not as technical as what we usually talk about. Um, We're going to talk about how to stay inspired in the studio. Um, So, you know, like our main thing is like creating rooms that inspire. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we like work on a lot of projects outside of, you know, have stick designs like musically as far as like engineering, you do a lot of producing. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're just going to talk about ways that we stay inspired once the room's set up. Yeah, and I was so excited whenever you reached out to me about doing this podcast um, yeah. because you know it's something we've been talking about a lot recently at mm-hmm. book club. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah, the chance to be able to talk about it here is pretty cool. Yeah, and for book club, so us two and then our intern Nate are yeah. like reading a book by Rick Rubin right now, yep. um, the Creative Act. The Creative Act. Um, and so yeah, so like we've been meeting once a week, like reading a couple of chapters and just talking about like some things that Rick Rubin is getting, um, or just the way that he operates basically. Yeah. Um, it has been insane because those chapters are like a max of four pages long (laughs) and we talk about them for two hours, like if not more. (laughs) Yeah. We have to stop ourselves. Actually, We're like, okay, we got to move on. (laughs) Yeah, for real. Um, but it's so cool because like that would be maybe step one to the whole staying inspired thing. Yeah. Um, his book is just so amazing. Uh, I, I actually heard him in an interview say that he wanted to write the book in such a way that you could only read so much before you felt so inspired that you needed to go write or produce or do whatever you want to do creatively. That's super cool. I didn't know that, but like, after going through just the chapters that we've gone through, like I totally get that vibe of, you know, anytime that we finish talking about what, like it's usually two chapters at a time. Yeah. Um, and it's like, man, by the time we get done, like I'm ready to go start working on something. So that's, totally. that's pretty cool that that was the the goal. Yeah. Yeah. It totally like fills your cup. And, yeah. A hundred percent. Well, yeah. So that, I didn't expect to go into that right away, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So like, I guess let's talk about, um, so obviously we're doing the book together, yeah. um, but go ahead and talk about some ways that you try to stay or that help you stay inspired in the studio. Yeah. So, um, I, I guess I could start here. I'll start with the, the beginning. Like this is something that, um, I've figured out, uh, after a f- my years of music production and it's just a method that I use. It's not like the only thing that works, um, but it definitely works for me. And basically what I do is I go on Splice, which is a a service that provides you with just like an unlimited amount of samples. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I go on there and um, I'm basically looking for any sort of sample that will spark my creativity. And so it's cool because usually you can you can find an unlimited amount, like with just the simplest search, you know, if I'm feeling like in a mood where I'm like, I'd really like to write something with an acoustic guitar today. Um, I can go on there and search an acoustic guitar riff. And usually I'm going to find one within like a few minutes that I'm like, dang, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, so once I get that, that's usually enough for me to be like excited and ready to work on the rest of the track. Um, and, Usually how it goes is I'll start from there. I'll go on to usually creating like the the most important parts of the track, like a really good bass line, um, you know, what the drum pattern is going to be and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so getting those core foundational elements right um, allows me to proceed um, and and not have to worry about that kind of stuff later. So it gives me this really strong push. Um, And the other thing is that's funny to me is that usually by the end of the song, it has almost nothing to do with that one sample anymore. Yeah. Like it's, that sample is usually not even, not only is it not a focal point, it's it's like not even included. So it's just it's just enough to like sort of get the, the ball rolling. That's something that, so we had a writing session together not too long ago. This was the first time that we had ever like worked on something together. Mm-hmm. And it was mind blowing on how like, you know, we had been, I think we went at it for like three hours, three or four hours. Yeah. And it was like, you know, we started out with like an acoustic guitar idea that I put down. Yeah. And then it just kind of kept evolving where it was like, all right, like this could be like an intro kind of thing. This could be like a pre-chorus, chorus and so on. Yeah. And then we hit like the bridge point where we're like, all right, like this is cool. 
And then yeah. you're just like, all right, we're just going to scrap it. Like, the, and he's <laughs> like, all right, this is something that like I could work with. I'm like, what? Like we've been working at this for like four hours and we're just going to get rid of everything. And I, it was just so interesting to me that like, yeah. that's how your writing process works where it's like, the by the time we hit the bridge like the main idea wasn't even there and the bridge yep. was super cool um but it was just like completely mind-blowing to me that you're like yeah we're just gonna scrap everything before <laughs> the bridge <laughs> like, yeah um but that's super cool yeah it's like um it's honestly like starting with a, a big piece of rock that you're gonna chisel out but yeah. you don't know what you're you're trying to make a sculpture of sure and so i feel like i start chiseling away and I'm just sort of waiting for the magic to happen. And once I see it, it's like, okay, I see what this is going to be now. And so let's forget about everything else because it, it's like, it's like you're trying to j just drill into it to be a, where you're like, okay, like I I'm excited. Yeah. Um, and, and everything else is, it's kind of like, um, like supports for, uh, for the rest of the idea to, to come about. And then once that's gone, then you can clear out the stuff that's like just okay and, and focus on building out from the piece that's really cool. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, so that that's probably the first thing um, is getting that, that strong push. Um, another thing that I think this applies to everybody. Um, and I think that at least in music production, I mm -hmm. can't, I can't say for anything, any other artistic pursuit, but <laughs> um, the process that you're using in the studio I, I think it's really important to focus on like step by step how you create. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the biggest things that I, I used to fall into and I'll, I'll still fall into honestly when I'm not feeling really strong and, and um, just not intentional mm -hmm. is I will focus on really small things uh, in, in the in the piece that are really inconsequential. Yeah. Like focusing on a kick and say, I'm like, oh, I don't know necessarily how this is fitting into the mix in the low end. Um, working on like, oh, I'm gonna EQ the 60 Hertz um, and, and use compression. It's like, that does not matter <laughs> when you haven't even gotten one tenth of the song written. Sure. Like you can't, you can't let yourself um, fall into that. And I think really what it is, is it's easier to do something that you've done a thousand times, like mix a kick. It's a lot easier to do that than it is to say, create a uh, a new section of the song. Right. That's where the real, um, you know, mental um, strain comes from. Is is trying to figure out those new parts. Mm -hmm. And so, the best way to do that, in my opinion, is just to focus on experimenting. Sure. And creating new small pieces, um, exploring different sound design, exploring different options for your arrangement, mm -hmm. really just trying to try out as many things as possible, as many ideas as possible, um, and, and basically just doing that until you feel like you have enough ideas there to where you're like, I have an abundance that I can choose from right now yeah. and, and, and work on the rest of this song. Um, and that's not an idea that I came up with. It's, it's another Rick Rubin thing, honestly. Um, listening to him talk and, and about his studio sessions, that's basically what he does is, yeah. you know, he'll get with a band and no idea is off limits. And right. it doesn't matter who comes up with the idea. Like, it could be one of the bandmates, obviously. It could be him, but it also could be somebody that's just stopping in to listen to the song. Yeah. Could be a like a a janitor that's there somehow and he has an idea um just any idea they will try out and that is how they they keep the creative process going they're not they're not like trying to um refine things that are not uh gonna be in the track at the end of the day right they're they're like let's try out as much as we can so that's I, a big thing for me like staying inspired for me is like that collaboration effort and like surrounding myself with people that, um, I mean, like yourself that are just like very, um, just very creative and like are very open to those new ideas and like, yeah, that didn't work, but like, <laughs> Hey, at least you tried it. Um, yep. and like, so that's, I totally, totally get that as far as, Hey, any ideas is open and let's mm -hmm. at least give it a shot. And if it didn't work, Hey, we'll move on to something else. And that's really important too. Like to be able to give yourself grace and saying like, Hey, like, I, you know, 
it's not me. It's not like it's not an ego thing of like, oh, I can sit down and just it's create an amazing track just right. like right off the bat. Um, you know, if an idea doesn't work, it, you know, it just didn't work. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you'll have a whole day of ideas not working, and that can be frustrating. But um, there's nobody that sits down and just writes. You know, everything that they write is is amazing. It's, right. It takes a lot of trying out ideas, and sometimes it takes a a period of like no ideas working and then you're like god like can i even do this yep. and then all of a sudden like they just start happening and you're like yes but the the key is to just keep trying mm -hmm. that's like i feel like that's one of the biggest things in this industry like if you're producing mixing mastering what have you that literally just doing it yep. like is the biggest thing because you can read all the books in the world that yeah. talk about you know mixing and different mic techniques and things but yeah. until you do them it's it's not the same like you just yeah. have to keep keep grinding on that yeah and that's a really good segue into uh i was going to bring up the the war of art uh, yeah. it's a book by stephen pressfield and basically the the summary of it is you can't wait for inspiration to strike yeah um you have to put yourself kind of in the way of inspiration um, and, and by that, uh, I mean, like you have to show up every day or just whatever day that you choose to write, right. um, create a schedule and stick to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and uh, it, it kind of goes deeper, honestly, like this is something I've been realizing recently. It's like, it's not enough to just show up. Um, if you, if you kind of like move away from the hard stuff while you're writing, like what I was just talking about and, and sort of. It's like procrastinating, honestly, when like you're you're doing like mixing and stuff when you should be writing. Um, but you have to basically show up and you have to be doing the important work. And um, like he looks at it in this really interesting way where it's like the muse is like a real thing. Mm -hmm. um, and he says that it's not the muse's job to find you and inspire you. Um, it's your job to let the muse know where you're going to be every day. Right. And so if you do that and you treat it like a real job um, and you're a professional, um, if you if you keep working that way, you can get to a point where the muse comes to you uh, because it's like you're respecting the muse. Sure. Um, so it's 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 really interesting the way he looks at it. But I, I've definitely found that if you do it like that and mm -hmm. you you act as a professional, um, it, it's going to help you a lot in terms of staying inspired. I totally agree with that. Like even if you're downloading like just multi-tracks off of like Cambridge or some mm -hmm. other website that you can get like the free multi-tracks like even though you're not making money off that mm -hmm. still treating it as like okay like I am today I'm setting up the session like everything so as if it were a yeah. actual paid gig it's like all right today I'm setting up the session tomorrow I'm doing cuts and chopping everything up and like basically getting the arrangement down like tomorrow I'm doing the mixing the next day yeah. I'm doing them like having that scheduled time like and still treating it as okay like this is the date that this band needs it yeah like this is how I'm treating it like is such a change in the mindset just going into it yeah. um and knowing like be so like any project that I work on whether it be for a client or just something for practice, like I have my schedule written out mm -hmm. beforehand. So it's like, all right, I know exactly what day I'm working on what. Um, awesome. And so like having that agenda kind of like going into it, it's like, okay, there's no thought into what I'm doing today. I just have to look and see, all right, this is what I'm doing. And this is what I'm focusing on today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it like that, I mean, if you think about any of your top um, like music idols or anything like yeah. if i think of my my favorite producers like um uh, elenium or or maybe like a, a dead mouse like it, it, their time in the studio is not um they're not making mistakes and i mean they're human so they might have sometimes sure. where they maybe fall short a little bit but i guarantee you with the amount of music those guys put out um their process is so dialed in um and their their ability to uh, schedule their time and use their time efficiently is yeah. so dialed in um, that like it's you got to ask yourself like okay would one of them be doing this right now like would one of them like allow themselves to be um, distracted or doing you know whatnot instead of getting this done it's like no like right. they they're they are the way they are and they're at the place that they're at because 
they have figured out how to do this mm-hmm. in the most professional, most um, just straightforward, focused way. Yep. Um, and, and it's kind of the same thing with us. I mean, like if, if Gavin walked in every day and was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to design the studio today. I need to <laughs> wait for the inspiration to strike. Right. It's like that doesn't – no, it doesn't happen that way. Like he is a professional and he gets things done because – he just turns it on. I mean, it's right. it's time to work, and and then, I mean, it's kind of the same process. I just realized this that like with our renderings, mm-hmm. um, it's like w- they send us the inspiration, we try it out, right? We send it to them, they kind of tell us what they like, and then we kind of keep working that way. But yeah. and it's all experimentation, really. Yeah, and the biggest thing is just getting it on paper. Like, yep. it can't just remain an idea in your head. Like, yes. it doesn't matter until you go and actually do it. Yes. Um, and that's huge. Like, yeah. And that's just the mindset. That's not even talking about like um, doing things as far as like using, like utilizing templates and like utilizing yeah. like presets, like, like creating your own presets and saving them and things yeah. like that. Um, but on the the one thing about like where you're talking about their process is so dialed in mm-hmm. um i do want to say that like there are times where you like i specifically for me i guess like i have to give myself some grace on like yeah. all right maybe like i definitely have my go-to like eqs go-to compressors and things like that but mm-hmm. there's so many of them out there that i don't know what i'm missing until i try them yeah. and so there is like some grace that has to be given on like all right like this time is going yeah. to be for learning about new plugins that i don't use or like Oh, totally. Or even new products or like things like that. Yeah, but. totally. And, and like if you schedule that time, I mean, I, I call that R and D. Yeah, uh, yeah. Exactly. Or sometimes like going to the Dagobah system. Yeah. <laughs> for Star Wars people <laughs> out there. Um, it's like you have to take some time where you're you're working on your own process. And, yeah. And part of that is like, okay, let me find this new plugin. Let me check this out. For sure. Um, because at the end of the day, like that stuff, you know, like for for example, Soothe. Mm-hmm. Like if before I started using Soothe. Um, it was mostly going through and, and finding each uh, resonant frequency and, and, and taming it um, manually. Sure. Um, soothe, you just kind of pop it on there and, and focus on the, the problem areas and you're good. Right. Um, and so if I would have just said, oh, I can't take time to look at plugins, uh, you know, the, the time I spent, you know, looking at that, which was maybe an hour, um, and then compared to the time it saved me, mm-hmm. um, it's kind of incredible. Yeah. Um, so it's it's definitely worth it. And and For honestly, sure. you you just touched on something that I thought was really interesting. Um, this is something that I've I've actually been implementing for a while too, but I I totally forgot about it. Um, having presets, having um, uh, like a live set template or something like mm-hmm. that. Basically, all the stuff that um you can sort of put into place beforehand so that you can easily, you know, just drop it into whatever project you're working on. Yeah. That is a huge way for me to stay inspired. Oh yeah. Um, Because I'm, I feel like inspiration is kind of like this little flame. Mm -hmm. It's like this little pilot light. Um, And it's, it's not super large to where a a wind couldn't, you know, knock it out. I feel like it's like, it's finite. It can go out. It can (laughs) definitely go out with like kind of like a small breeze. Um, so you need to focus on on continually like adding fuel to the fire yep um, and 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 making sure that you're not interrupting you know that that flame and so part of doing that is is having all those presets having all those those templates so that you can just you know like th- the flow that you're in never gets interrupted yep you know if you have to if you're working on something and you're feeling really inspired and then, say you're not that great with sound design yet and you're mm-hmm. like oh i think this could really use a, a cool like lead here um but i don't really know how to make it and so then you take like 30 minutes to go in and try to design something that is just not gonna really sound that great mm-hmm. and then you're like dang like it you know like all of a sudden you're frustrated instead of um being inspired that like you were 30 minutes ago right and so it, like take the flip side of that if you were to instead you know take the time that you were just talking about to uh, um you know maybe sometimes you take time to look at other pl- plugins maybe you take some time to just do sound design yeah and so you create like a bank of your own presets your own sounds that are true to your art and you have that at your disposal so 
instead of taking that time while you're in the project to try to fine tune, maybe you're feeling inspired. You say, oh, I need a lead right now. I'm just going to choose from my five signature leads, mm -hmm. drop them into the project, and then boom, you're, you're off to the races. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, it's like that inspiration, that creativity, you're, you're trying to like make, um, you're trying to like grease the wheels, I guess, to, to where you're not running into any friction. Yeah. Which totally makes sense. And that's something for me, like on the mixing side, like, especially as I'm getting like more paid projects and things like that. Um, and it doesn't always work out this way because, you know, not all projects come in on the same day. But yeah. um, I've been trying to, like, basically get it to where setting up the session is mm -hmm. not even counted as, like, a mixing day. Like, because mm -hmm. it's more of a housekeeping thing. Yeah. But at the same time, the creative process of mixing is going to be so much easier to handle if the session is set up exactly how I want it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of those where it's like, all right, maybe like my wife and I are just watching TV or something. So I'll just set up the session exactly how I want it mm -hmm. while it's like not actually in the studio time kind of deal. Yeah. Um, that way the next day when I'm ready to actually start mixing, then it's like, all right, the session's already set up exactly how I want it. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, it's kind of like being my own studio assistant. Like that's generally something that like a studio assistant would do at a larger studio mm -hmm. where now it's like, all right, I'm just spending off time that it doesn't take like a hundred percent of my attention to be able yeah. to do it. But so I can be like watching TV or just spending time with family or something. Yeah. Um, but still get it done effectively. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I kind of do the same thing. And it's so I'm working on finishing um, a, sort of like an EP right now. So yeah. I haven't been working on a ton of new stuff recently. Um, but I just remembered, like, once you said that, that one of the things that I'll do is it's basically the same thing. Like, I'll set up a, a new session, I'll find like a few pieces of inspiration, I'll sort of decide on the things like bass line, drum pattern, stuff like that, that are like really, you know, foundational. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, be happy more or less with where it is and feel like, okay, this could really be cool. And then I'll set it down and wait until like a day that I'm going to have a lot of time to work on it. Mm -hmm. Um, because when I do that, then I'm walking into a project on that day and I don't have to figure out any of the stuff that's like usually so it can be so like crippling. Yeah. Honestly, where you're like, uh, I don't know, you know, these decisions, they can be taxing, honestly any decision you make is, is somewhat taxing. Yeah. They've got studies. You only on have that. so many decisions a day. Exactly. Like, yeah. And so if you walk into a, a writing day or a mixing day and you're like, the most important decisions have been made. Mm -hmm. All I have to do now is have fun. Yeah. Um, wow. What a, what a great weapon that is. I mean, that's just yeah. another huge boost, um, to get into the flow. For sure. This is something that, um, or the next thing that I want to talk about is something that you actually got me into. Yeah. Um, and like, you call it your deep dives. Yeah. Um, and this is something that like, I know you were talking about it more so on like a production side of things. Mm -hmm. Um, but once I started doing it, like my mixing game, like changed a lot. And this oh, is yeah? like how honestly, like doing those deep dives is where I, so like, I'll listen to the song mm -hmm. and I'll let you explain it. But, sure. um, like after I listen to the song, it's like, all right, like I really liked certain aspects. So then I'll mm -hmm. go look up the engineer and then go see like, all right, what equipment are they using? And that's actually how oh. I've been finding new plugins is based on that. So all that said, go ahead and explain what your deep dive process is. Wow. Okay. So first off, that's really cool. Yeah. I didn't, I'm, hey, we haven't had the chance to talk about that. So that's awesome. Yeah. I'm excited to talk more about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, my process for it is, um, and this is something I just, I, I can't remember who told me about doing something like this, but it's definitely not my idea. It's just, you know, something I've gained after doing this for a little while. Um, but basically what I do is I'll take a song, I'll separate it into basically every section where something changes. Mm -hmm. And so in EDM, which is like my main genre, um, it's pretty easy because, uh, things tend to change a lot. Um, but they're usually pretty significant. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sort of the the flow of a song is how it evolves. And, and so it's it's a really big thing you need to focus on. So what I'll do is uh, once I've had the section sort of like marked, uh, I'll go through in each section, I usually first try to write out what 
each element is doing. It, well, first is it's identifying every element. Sure. And so I'm trying to listen to find like exactly like what's going on in there it, down to the smallest thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because I want to know, you know, what pieces make up this overall sound that I'm listening to that I love. Yeah. Most of the time when I hear a, a song or when anybody hears a song, you just hear it and immediately like all of it comes to you and you're just like, wow, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. Um, but not very often are you able to just like really hone in on every individual thing, especially not when you first listen to it. Sure. And that's what I'm concerned with because I want to make good music. And so I want to know what the songs that I love, you know, what they're made up of. Um, and so it's first identifying every little piece in the song. Um, and then after that, it's it's sort of, getting like a bird's eye view of like what each piece is doing, how it evolves from one section to the next. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it it's really cool because, you know, after I get through like maybe the first half of the song, uh, it, it's incredible. Like it, it's like I can hear basically everything that's going on that I, I had no idea what was going on before. And yeah. usually one of the things that I'll realize is, wow, this is a lot simpler than I thought it was. Sure. You know, stuff that like, especially in EDM, you'll hear stuff that you're like, oh, my God, like, how did they come up with that? Mm -hmm. This is incredible. Like, there's so much happening when you sort of section it off and and just look at each individual element. It's almost it's almost always a lot simpler than you think. Sure. The the producer uh, is usually just able to just use each element in such a cool way that it ends up sounding like this massive uh crazy thing um but it really just speaks to their skill yeah um, absolutely and especially when you're talking about how simple some of the it's like yes taking a simple um audio source and then like depending on like what effects they're adding or anything yeah. like how you can completely transform an audio source is yeah. pretty incredible <laughs> oh my god it's it's incredible um and so i'm listening for things like that i'm listening for like what kind of processing is on this um and then the other thing is listening for how the processing might change from one section to the next sure and how the overall makeup of of the elements changes from one section to the next um and so i i do that for the whole song and and by the end of it it's like a whole new song to me right um and so it that is usually i mean honestly not usually it's it's every time every time i do it it is is such a rush of inspiration to me because it's like all of a sudden i get to this I get to peek inside of this the, the producer's brain, honestly. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just so cool because I'm like, wow, like the level of of production value that's possible is just kind of astounding. Yeah. Um, with with some of these producers, with honestly so many producers that are on Spotify these days, like there's so many great people out there. Um, but it, to tie that up, um, there's a quote that, uh, actually was in Rick Rubin's podcast and we're just going to shout him out like 70 times. Yeah. Uh, but Rick Rubin fanboys for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but he has this quote where he's like, um, and it might not even be him, but he's the one that I heard it from where he was like to, to access creativity. One just needs to be able to look deeply. Yeah. And that just resonated with me so much because that's the whole deep dive to me. It's, mm-hmm. it's looking so deeply and getting all this inspiration. And then all, also, I feel like it just adds to my bank of ideas whenever I sit down to produce. Yeah. So like I was telling you that I was in kind of a rut for like a few months. And um, just this this past Saturday, I had the best writing session I think I've had in a while. Yeah. Because I started it with a few deep dives. And it was like I had all those ideas flowing, you know, already when I started to work on what I was working on. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was something too, that when you showed me like at least two of the songs that you listened to, um, and like how, and some of the points that you pulled from that, it's like, man, we literally just listened to the same song yeah. and there were things that you pointed out that it's like, I didn't even notice that. Like, yeah. and now, now that you have pointed those things out, like in those instruments and those sound effects, mm-hmm. now it's like, I can't listen to the song without noticing them. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is super cool. And it's also kind of crazy, like the difference between, what the deep dive does for you versus like what it does on like for me on the mixing side, because Mm -hmm. like, again, where I'm talking about, that's how I get introduced to new plugins and things like that. It's also how I get introduced to new techniques where it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, like I hear this audio source and maybe like they're panning it differently or like Mm -hmm. they're using like a trem to go back and forth instead of like just a delay or something like that. And so 
it's I mean, I feel like that's what like is going to make people better at their craft is by just like, all right, these are the people that are getting paid to do it full time. These are the people that are, you know, putting out the records of the year, albums of the year. Yeah. Um, It's like, you know, they tend to be the ones to learn from, at least on the technique side. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. You have this gigantic wealth of information at your disposal. It's like a master class from every great artist ever known is right at your disposal if you just take the time to sit there and and really listen exactly and that's something too where i made the comment about like surrounding yourself with you know creative people and people that are doing kind of what you want to be doing Uh, that saying that doesn't mean that it has to be like a like physical in person where it's like all right obviously like we're friends we like collaborate on things it's easy to do that but Mm. people were again we talk about rick rubin or like uh, people like Manny Mariquin and like these other engineers, it's like, yeah. I don't personally know them, but by reading their books, by like watching their videos online, like, um, keeping track of how they do different things on projects. Mm-hmm. It's like, you can still get that inspiration from those people without knowing them in person. I feel like that's super important. Oh, it's super important. It's super important. I mean, I have that book that I have the creative act in my studio just as a way to say, like, I got Rick in the studio with me today. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you just have and, and especially like reading about it. It's like you get that vibe. Right. Um, and, and so, yeah. But those are all ways that I've found that are uh, good for, for keeping the inspiration going. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, it's just stuff that's worked for me. But, um, yeah, I mean, hopefully that can help somebody out there that's yeah. maybe trying to figure out how to do that better for sure no and that and again like where you mentioned that you were super excited for this episode like so was i like again (laughs) it's very different where like generally we're talking about like the acoustical portion only and so the fact that we dove into our worlds a little bit where it's like actually talking about like the mixing process the producing process like Mm -hmm. i was really excited about that for sure um so thanks for joining me on this one absolutely Um, and thank you for joining us on this episode of the sound project um if you have certain things that keep you inspired in the studio or producing or mix it whatever it be um on the creative side go ahead and comment that below we'd love to hear how you guys stay inspired and we'll see you next week